So we have yet another $5 find uh, on the bench here. This brown and tan box. Again, my local electronics uh, recycler. And the first thing we can see here, of course, is I have it on the bench upside down. A couple of things caught my attention with this piece. Uh, first off, of course, was the price, but it's got a great cat eye tube sitting here. Uh, some very nice feeling switches. This multi level switch here. I don't know if you can see this. It's got an outer ring, middle ring, and then a, what feels like a potentiometer. Potentially a 10 turn, or that's just free spinning and something's broke. I'm not sure which. Uh, pluck whatever that is out of there. It sounds to me like a 10 turn pot inside, but it certainly just free spins. This great little. C C R R L and L. Obviously, it's a uh, L C R meter. That's uh, impedance bridge. This little connector here. There seems to be uh, A one K C and O one K C, and I'm assuming that refers to. Color cycles. It doesn't seem to uh, come out. We've got this, of course, really nice multi turn with gross adjust and fine adjust on it. So it's an interesting piece. And in the lid, although it's very yellowed, I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera, is AC resistance capacitance or inductance measurement and DC resistance measurements. Uh, so I thought maybe I'd plug it in, give it a spin, and we'll see if we can figure out what we can do with it. Uh, connect unknown to R terminals. So let's see, we have capacitance, resistance, or inductance. Uh, But as always, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and take a peek inside before I even attempt to apply power to it. Uh, this power cord has seen better days. The rubber is very brittle. Yeah, this power cord's in really piss poor shape. There's electrical tape here. Looks like there's probably just four screws holding this faceplate on. Always interesting to get a peek inside of something like this. I'm thinking mechanically inside these three switch assemblies are going to be very uh, nice. Of course, I should probably be doing this with it sitting on its back. For the final screw. Okay, the entire assembly is going to come out as one giant block. Well, I can already, as I had surmised, it is tube based outside. Drawing it. And we'll take a look. Wow, it's heavy. Of course, that's the other tidbit. It is heavy. So. so we've got the cat eye tube and the black cylinder here. A couple of tubes here, I assume, are probably oscillator. 
uh, a Sprague 20 to 450 volt 20 450 oh, same thing again what's the can is common where's the capacitance well, it must be dual 20 microfarad now that I look at it of course that electrolytic is going to be most likely long dead what the two tubes are oh. Oh, I just white yeah the lettering on this is long dead and essentially just wiped off with my fingertip it was unreadable so I don't know what tube that is <coughs> Oh wow, it was certainly easier to get out than it's being to get back in. There we go. There's this beautiful ganged. I don't know if you can see this. Well, uh, let me see if I can tilt it up a bit here and get you a little bit better view. There are three large wire round potentiometers, one, two, and three here that are ganged. And you can see the wiper on all three, and that's a gorgeous assembly. Really, really nice. Wow, is that really pretty. And of course, the Oh. <clears throat> trying to uh, prop it up on a round cylinder is not the wisest idea this is just a wafer switch here but the switch body looks to be in really good shape let's go ahead and set it up this way we've got these what, what I'm guessing are precision wire round resistors So we've got the front one on the large ring, the middle one here on the center ring, and that is a potentiometer in the back. And I can see the shaft turning back to it. And I'm surprised there isn't an end stop on that. Because it doesn't appear to be a multi-turn. So that potentiometer may be broken inside, or it's just meant the free spin. I'm not sure what this is. It might be an ovenized oscillator. I don't know. It only has... I'm not sure what it is. It only has two wires coming to it. Some kind of a can for something. I, I don't know what it is. Let's go ahead and rotate it up this way. And you can get a better look at these uh, wire round resistors. On these rotor switches. So we've got this dial here. We've got this little which is coming to the front switch in the assembly. And then of course we're driving the center switch there with the knob. Well internally it's really pretty. Uh, interesting construction. Oh, I've got a dog whining for something. She has had her breakfast, but uh, being a dog she's always hungry. That's awfully close to making contact there. Pretty much what I what I would have expected for the era. Again, those gang potentiometers. It's really a beautiful piece. 
we've got a bit of coax running out of this box and a couple of wires running into it There's potential that's something that's organized and we've got these metal cans here Quite a bit of persuasion seem to go into a socket assembly and make me think they are oscillator packages there we go so it's got a button here that it snaps into Just some kind of a little can. Oh wow, the fuse is buried deep inside. That's quite interesting. Now well, let's open one of these up and take a peek inside. Assuming I can find a small flat screwdriver laying here in the sea of screwdrivers on the bench. It's always amazing to me that I uh, straighten the bench up. Well, that screwdriver's not going to work, a little too big. And two hours later, there's screwdrivers everywhere, and everything is in total chaos again. Sorry for my reach past the camera. Let's go ahead and see if we can back this screw out. Take a look at what's in this can. So some mica capacitors, a variable cap, there's an inductor in there. I'm sure it's just a little oscillator, nothing magical about it. I'm sure the other one's identical inside. Let's see if I can get it to reassemble here. challenge. Oh, Rosie. I'm assuming this is going to be the same thing, just mirrored. So these were in this way. Really is just mirrored. here on the back. It's got a little cover that does come off. Let's see what potential magic we've got inside of here. So it looks like it's got to be a transformer. There's multiple windings. I was thinking it was an in 
ducked her at first, just a choke maybe. But there's multiple wires coming out of it. I'm sure you can't see in there really well. Uh, some I don't know, some kind of a choke or transformer. It's obviously shielded, so they were worried about it. worried about stray magnetic fields. Uh, no surprise, this has got a meter movement on the front. Oh, I can't get this screw to straighten up. There it is. Well, you were difficult coming out, now you're being difficult going in. Appreciate it. Sorry for the hands and elbows in the camera. I don't see anything necessarily unsafe. Except these electrolytic caps. Uh, I see no evidence of leakage. Whether that cap will survive a power cycle, I don't know. But I see no evidence of leakage. 20 microfarads, 450 volt. There's a dry electrolytic here and a 5 microfarad dry electrolytic back here. And there's actually a third one hiding back in here. And what's the working voltage on those? Fifty volts DC, five microfarad. Yeah, fifty volts DC. It looks like they're probably all three the same. Um, I am intrigued a bit by the cat eye tube. So let me DC resistance measurement. Turn amp control clockwise to energize incident. So which one is the amp control? Okay. So that is the power switch. Of course this does have high voltage in it. So we have a high and low range. We have an oscillator switch. So I'm not going to energize it. Set oscillator control at DC which we've done. Set toggle switch at high. Connect unknown to R terminals. Do I have a resistor laying around here? Let's see, it says to or low if the resistance is less than 100 ohms. Let me just grab a known resistor. <laughs> get over to the res resistor box, which is of course across the lab. Grab a 1K here. Do I expect this to work? Oops, well, you heard that. I obviously dropped something. I'll take a 1K and drop it down across the terminals. So we've got a 1K ohm resistor. Set the detector switch at external detent detector switch. At external detent. Detector switch, external detent. Set circuit selector switch at R times one. R times one. Set LCR dial at 1.0. LCI dial multiplier at 1.0. Uh, 
set LCR dial, that's the LCR dial multiplier, at R times 1, set LCR dial 1.0, They must, they mean one ohm. That doesn't make sense. Set generator switch at direct current. Set detector switch on shunted meter. Wait a minute, set. Set detector switch on shunted meter. I thought a minute ago it said external detent. Ah, uh, release galvanometer clamp. So I don't have the power on, I get what's going on here. So, smoke and fire or pilot light? Well, we have a pilot light. We do have power. And I do smell a little bit of heat. I have heaters in the two tubes. I have no glow in the cat eye tube. There's no deflection on the galvanometer. Pull that resistor back out. Turn amp control clockwise to energize instrument. I've done. Set oscillator control at DC. I'm back up at the top. Oscillator control. We spotted this a little while ago. Detector, generator, oscillator control. Set oscillator control at DC. Up here, oscillator. Oh, there's the cat eye tube. Well, it does light. So we know we can get a tube, an oscillator tube. Set oscillator control at DC, set toggle switch at high. Connect unknown R to terminals. Well, I already had that in there, but we'll put it back in. Set detector switch at external detent. We need release galvanometer clamp uh, and adjust it movement to zero. It's very close to zero. I'm not going to actually make an adjustment. Set so circuit selector switch at R times one. Circuit selector switch at R times one. Set LCR dial at one dot zero. This is the one that's confusing me. I'm not sure where one dot zero is here. Does it mean one set um, one dot zero zero? I mean, it specifies one dot zero zero zero, so three zeros. The only thing that would make sense, I can smell it warming up would be 1 ohm. Set this detector switch on shunted meter. Set generator switch on direct current. It's already set the direct current. 
Definitely smell it warming up. Adjust LCR dial multiplier. Let's see. An LCR dial. Ah, uh, I get what this was saying earlier. Set LCR dial at 1.00. This needs to come around. Ooh. Well, you only want to have one hand on it. One. Zero. Zero. I suspect that's what they're. That's 1.0. That may be what they were talking about there. Set generator switch on direct current. Adjust LCR dial multiplier. Again, is that this guy or this guy? I'm getting zero deflection on the galvometer. Which no surprise. I'd be surprised if it actually worked. Just LCR dial multiplier. Now let's go back and try an AC measurement. Turn an amp control clockwise to energize instrument. Leave control at approximately mid position. Set oscillator at approximately mid position. Well, we got a nice little cat eye there. A dirty pot. Set so toggle switch at high. Connect the unknown resistor. Set so circuit selector switch at appropriate LRC position. So it's R times one. Set so generator switch at one thousand cycles. Generator switch out. 1000 cycles. Set detector switch at external detect. Adjust LRC multiplier and LRC dial for widest shadow on AC null indicator. I'm not seeing any effect on it at all. We've certainly not nulled it out. Just LRC. Well, I guess it does. This is the LRC dial. LRC dial multiplier. This is DQ. There's actually a pictorial here. Adjust LRC multiplier, LRC d dial, and DQ dial. We have got... Yeah, at this point it's obvious. Obvious it's not working. We're getting no deflection off the uh, galvometer whatsoever. No surprise. Well, Geometers really dirty. They all are. Well, they're pretty damn old, that's for sure. I didn't find a cow sticker on it to get an idea. The construction to me, 50s or 60s. Uh, nothing's really jumping out with date codes.
It certainly is uh, an interesting piece, and that cat eye tube is, of course, I'm sure as you can see here, very pretty. Yeah, in both DC and AC measuring, there's just no, no deflection on the galvanometer. Uh, which says some part of the circuit is not working, obviously. Well, I'm not sure there's a whole lot more we can do with this without attempting a tear down and repair, which I'm not going to do. Uh, I pick this stuff up as more of a curiosity and it's something I actually want to repair and fix. Uh, this will most likely show up at the uh, Mike and Key swap meet next month in Puyallup, Off Washington. I've got a table there and some of the items you've seen in the videos here will be there for sale and as you've seen I get really good deals on this stuff and they will be let go again for very good prices. Yeah, that shaft is bent. Anyhow, I guess I'll wrap this up. A little anticlimactic that we didn't really get anywhere. And we'll go from there. So anyhow, we'll talk soon.